Fellow Africans, happy and prosperous new year to you. Have you ever wondered why governments of the developed world invest huge sums of dollars in media outlets to reach citizens of underdeveloped nations? Have you ever thought about that? For example, the British government spends 600 million euros annually on the BBC World Service with a weekly audience of not less than 96 million people in Africa. That's a lot of number. You see, there is a battle for our mind out there. Hence the media investments by Western powers. A battle to condition the mind of Africans for strategic purposes. Steve Biko once said that the most powerful weapon in the hands of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. And I agree. In the words of George Orwell, the most effective way to destroy a people is to deny and destroy their own understanding of their history. Fellow Africans, as at this first day of the year 2021, the darkest thing about Africa is not a caricature image and misinformation out there. No or the state of the continent as we know it today, but the ignorance of Africans, of who and what Africa is, the minefields navigated so far, conspiracies survived, and the formidable obstacles ahead of us. That's the problem. So, fellow Africa, my question to you this hour, and in this new year, is this, how much do you know of your Africa? You see, for centuries, strategies have been deployed to manipulate and brainwash Africans, corrupt our understanding of ourselves, our reality, and the world, and implant in us a flawed notion of inferiority and little value adding in the world. Believe, you, believe me or not, one of those strategies is the use of world map Yes, world map to create a visual illusion of a small intellectually, politically, and economically insignificant Africa. But is that really true? Now, here are the facts. Africa has a total area space larger than all of Europe, China, and the United States of America combined. Yes, it is three times the area of China three times the area of Europe, three times the area of the United States of America, meaning you can transplant China, Europe and United States and several other countries on the Africa continent and they will fit neatly. Africa is 30.5 million square kilometers and a youthful population of 1.3 billion inhabitants. China is 9.6 million square kilometers and 1.4 billion inhabitants. India has a total space of 3.3 million square kilometers and 1.4 billion inhabitants. Now, yet, Africa is projected as overpopulated and pressure mounts on Africans and their leaders to depopulate. Why? <laughs> Why? Now, please note, Africa is home to 60% of the world's arable land, 90% of raw material reserve, 40% of gold reserve, 33% of diamond reserve, 95% of platinum reserve, and holds the largest bauxite reserves in the world. Of course, in addition to manganese, woods, uranium, crude oil, and others. Yet, the continent is touted as the poverty capital of the world and ripe for depopulation. The question is, why? Well, President Jacques Chirac of France provides an illuminating insight. He said, we bled Africa for four and a half centuries. We looted their raw materials. Then we told lies that the Africans are good for nothing. In the name of religion, we destroyed their culture. And after being made rich at their expense, we now steal their brains through miseducation and propaganda to prevent them from enacting black retribution against us." Unquote. Well, put simply, for over four centuries, 
Africa is not in control of its resources. Look, a 2016 study of Africa by the NGO called War on Want reveals that 101 companies, mostly British, control $305 billion worth of platinum, $276 billion worth of oil, and $216 billion worth of coal at 2016 market prices. Yes, they own mines or mineral licenses in 37 African countries and control vast swath of Africa's land, four times the size of the United Kingdom. Now look, Africa subsidizes the rest of the world by $32 billion annually. A 2017 report by Global Justice Now and other groups estimates that $161.6 billion enter into Africa, while $202.9 billion leave Africa almost every year. For example, in 2017, Africa received a total of $19.7 billion in aid, but paid back $18 billion in debt repayments. Debt burden is killing Africa. African governments have borrowed between 25 and 75 percent of their GDP, but with little or nothing to show for it. Africans in the diasporas remit not less than $32 billion annually, but multinational companies siphon $32.4 billion in profits and illicit financial outflows. Look, an estimated $29 billion are stolen via illegal logging, fishing and poaching annually. How can any continent, country or people accumulate and sustain wealth, growth and prosperity with such statistics? That's a great question. Well, look, hopefully, now you know your Africa better. Edmond Mbiaka once wrote, Peace of mind always comes with knowing who you truly are, where you currently stand, where you positively need to be, and strongly believing in its possibility. Africa needs to control its resources, no doubt. For productive, patriotic, and effective leadership, we need our best and ablest citizens with fortified character in local, state, and federal governments. This must be given utmost consideration in upcoming elections across Africa. Let me say it once more. Our problem is not the age of our leaders, but unfortified character. It is your responsibility to protect and defend your Africa. The starting point is to educate and transform the mindset of our leaders and peoples. Look, the least you can do is to assist with ensuring that this message reaches every African. Slavery destroyed us. Religion divided us. Ignorance controls us. And truth scares us. With these retrogressive forces, Africa will remain a dark continent. So we must renew our minds. Please share this video in support of my efforts at reconstructing Africa through mindset transformation. You see, together, we will reconstruct Africa and take charge of our destiny. For who controls Africa controls the world. I thank you.